When it comes to a string's chemistry, few brands are more forward-thinking than Grapple Snake. Their latest release, Paradox Pro, is designed specifically to excel where other traditional polys have fallen short. Tension maintenance, playability, duration, and launchiness, hence the name Paradox Pro. So in today's video, we're going to get to the bottom of one question. Has Paradox Pro conquered the ailments of other polyesters, or is it just a case of marketing hype and influencer brainwashing by me, the guy who shills for grapple snake? Well, what exactly makes Paradox Pro different? Unfortunately, I can't get too specific. Grapple Snake has spent hours in the lab and they want to maintain their competitive advantage they've earned through all of that, but I can share a few things with you. First up, we're dealing with an all new metal additive. Additives are like signatures for polyesters. They're the secret behind what makes one string play differently from another. For example, aluminum is the key behind LU power. It's what adds that crisp, ball pocketing sensation that ALU has become so famous for. So when you encounter other silver colored, crispier feeling strings really designed to exude that feeling of ALU power, you can bet that aluminum was included in the composition of those strings. So in addition to this all new metal in higher quantities than we've seen in most other strings, that would suggest that we're dealing with something pretty unique feeling. Offerings like Hypergee, RPM Blast, Polytour Pro, they all have a much more muddied, more plasticky, more muted feel. And that makes a lot of sense when you remember they're literally made from plastic. But there is one string on the market that does feel very, very similar to Paradox Pro. In fact, it's the string that helped Dominic Team win his US Open title, and it's one of the worst marketed strings of all time. And that's Babla RPM Power. RPM Power is another string that just doesn't play like anything else. It's got a very crisp, clear hitting feel, similar to Paradox Pro in a lot of ways. And that launch angle is as low as any polyester I've ever tried. RPM Power is viciously punishing at low swing speeds and it can feel dead and unforgiving without the ability to generate regular snapback. So what exactly makes RPM Power feel so unforgiving? It's that snapback, there's almost none of it. The string has a ton of friction caused what I have to assume in part by the gritty sandpapery texture, which also gives the string its slight metallic spark. So RPM Power is got to be one of the weirdest strings to actually string. It has so much friction, listen. You can like hear how hard it is to weave and pull through. It's like, I don't even know what that sound is. Listen to me pull tension here, ready? Oh. So squeaky, like gross. Okay, so by some miracle, it gets worse. <laughs> Thankfully, even though Paradox Pro shares that similar texture, it kind of strings up just like any other poly. So if RPM power is so unpleasant to both string and play with, why on earth does TM use it? We haven't actually asked him about it. Obviously, we're not, we're not on talking terms right now for some reason. I have to assume that it's a control thing. TM puts so much energy into every shot he hits, generating huge spin, huge power. Goodness me! Problem is, that huge power and that huge spin just doesn't old. seem always under control. TM had a tendency to lose to players he shouldn't. A habit he still has, though in his prime it really felt like it was all because of overhitting, missing balls long and wide. I think that lower launch angle and strong directional control of RPM power helped keep his ball down and in the court, helping him earn that maiden US Open title. And while RPM power is called power, I have to say it is a a pure control string and it works best when tasked to tame huge swings helping big hitters keep that ball in when a traditional polyester might snap back and launch that ball out. Paradox Pro delivers on these very similar promises to RPM power. The launch angle is definitely lower than your typical polyester string. That sandpapery texture helps grab the ball so you get a little bit more ball bite than you might with a traditional 
round poly, and it's definitely not as grippy as something with a sharp edge like Torn to Silver 7 Tour or a rough string like Tour by Diamond Rough, but the benefit you get is a much more predictable launch angle. And I actually think the directional control with Paradox Pro exceeds that of RPM power. And the response you get off the string bed is so pure and clean feeling that you know exactly what's going on with your contact point. Depth control is superb and I didn't notice a single inconsistent launch. The amount of confidence the string instills in the user when operating at maximum aggression with maximum swing speeds honestly might be unmatched in the string market today. Not to mention one other area where Paradox Pro absolutely destroys RPM power. Just like RPM Blast, RPM power is coded and once that coding rubs off, which it does faster than you would hope, the playability transforms from this super control-oriented gem into a steaming pile of rotting garbage. But Paradox Pro's playability remains very strong, playing pretty much the same well past the six hour mark. I'd even go so far as to say that I prefer the playability towards that third, fourth, fifth hour of play and onwards, but there could be something to say of me just getting used the feel and playability aspects of Paradox Pro. So let's go back to the start of the video when we had that one question. Does Paradox Pro deliver on its goals? I would say yes, however, it does make some sacrifices. It's a lot more control oriented, way less launchy, tension maintenance is better, and the playability duration remains true until the string breaks. But the problem is, the lack of snapback means that spin is average at best. I personally find that the rougher texture of the string did not offer enough extra ball bite to make up for the reduction in snapback from a pure RPM's perspective. My ball just wasn't dipping down with spin in the same way it would, and it seemed much less heavy than what I can produce with a so-called normal poly, like their own Tour M8, Tour Sniper, or my preferred right now Torline Wasabi or even Slinko Confidential. I don't know if I prefer Torline Wasabi, I kind of regret saying that, but I do like it. At this point, it's really hard to tell if that increased depth control I get from Paradox Pro is going to win me more points compared to the extra spin and power that I get from something more typical. Thing is, my identity as a tennis player has always been based around spin. I personally find it super satisfying to see that ball just take a nosedive before hitting the baseline after clearing the net with huge margin. But that's not even the worst part. I'm very sad to report that RPM power was likely a contributing factor to the tragic incident which occurred on September 11th, 2023, when I got tennis elbow for the very first time. Oddly, it's not for the reason you might think. Typically, we assume that extremely stiff strings or rackets contribute to tennis elbow, but Paradox Pro is supposed to be quite soft. It certainly feels soft in the hands and pockets the ball quite well, two factors we typically associate with a soft poly. So why the discomfort? First, the feel is so pure and so connected that it transmits quite a bit of additional vibration through the string bed than your typical poly, even though it kind of feels softer. This, combined with my Slinko Whiteout, which is also quite stiff, also quite raw, leads to a total package which I would describe as a high vibration setup. But beyond that, I think what hit me even harder was the lack of snapback. It's not really that the spin is poor full stop, it's that you really need to take a huge rip at the ball to generate that snapback and find that spin. This led me to over torquing my racket leg and windshield wiper motion, which put a lot of strain on my elbow in both the tennis elbow location and the golfer's elbow location. In this part, I wanted to hit on court and, and tell you about as I'm hitting with the, with the racket and the string. But I strung up Paradox Pro again in a softer racket at, at a lower tension and a more open string pattern to see if I could find that snapback with Paradox Pro in a V-Core 98. But within a couple of minutes, I think what happened was my body remembered the sensation of this string and it locked up my forearm. And I, I've been playing pain-free for like six weeks, no problem. But now my elbow hurts again, just after from a couple hit, minutes hitting with this VCore 98 with Paradox Pro. It, I think it's a little bit in my head because it's, it's 
it doesn't feel like I've gotten a full strain, but rather that the muscles have completely tightened up, like my elbow has PTSD or something and it's just reacting negatively to the string now, which is, it's pretty obvious for your body to remember what this Paradox Pro feels like because the hitting feel is so unique and there's quite a bit of vibration that comes through. So I have to say that is a deal breaker for me. I wish I could play with it because I want to experiment a little bit more with maybe hybrid setups in Paradox Pro, but at this point, I just can't even use it. It's too demanding and it's giving me too much pain. Still though, I do think that there are benefits like playability, duration, and directional control with Paradox Pro that I don't want to completely ignore. So do you, I think you should give them a try? Well, of course, because I have an affiliate link in the description below just for you. But I honestly think that the appeal of Paradox Pro is gonna be a much more narrow than the more widely accessible options from Restring Zero, Grapple Snake Tour, MA, Toraline, Wasabi, whatever other so-called influencer string brands we wanna discuss. For Paradox Pro, you definitely wanna be at least a 4.5 player, preferably a hard hitting 4.5 player to see any benefits from this string. If you're a big flat hitting 5.0 or higher who specifically uses a heavy racket to help kind of absorb some of these extra vibrations, that's the player who I think is really the target audience for Paradox Pro. And for you, I would recommend trying this out, assuming you don't have a sensitive arm. So if you do want to try a set, like I said, I do have a link in the description. Purchases made through that link will directly support the creation of future tennis content, but you could try something else from Grapple Snake too. I personally think Grapple Snake is worth supporting whether you use my link or someone else's, and that's why I've been working with them for so long. They have so much passion, love, and they put a lot of science into the game. I know they spend a lot of R&D time in the lab to test their strings and they want to really push the boundary, the technical boundary of tennis strings. And I think that Paradox Pro is a good example of them pushing the technological boundary of tennis strings, but I'm not sure they've really delivered it in a package that's going to be widely accessible to all of us rec players who we know we kind of need to sell strings to rec players to support a tennis business. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions about the string in the comments and make sure you use my affiliate link or else.